Hi, Tricia here. Uh, I thought I would go over scalp trade setups that set up yesterday um, and just show you why I would take something or why I wouldn't take something based on the indicators all being in alignment along with the other longer tick chart and the smaller time frame minute chart. So that would help hopefully give you a better understanding of what you're looking at as they set up live each trading day. Um, if you want to get the two trade setups that I use, you can go to www.easyeminitrade.com. I have one that I use that I take entries off a longer tick chart and one that I use for scalps off a smaller tick chart. And everything has to be in alignment on three charts with the specific indicators. So with that said, <clears throat> this is a scalp trade that's set up about 9.43 yesterday morning and you would pass on this because the trending indicator is below 20. So my criteria is if it's not above 20 then I pass and of course once I look at that then I look at my other indicators to make sure everything is in alignment so um, in the ebook I do give you a checklist to go over before you take each trade so you can make sure that all your criteria are met now some people might decide to eliminate one of the criteria or indicators so they might get a few more entries and that's fine whatever is going to work for you and um, help you be successful as a trader that's fine but that's something that you would have to define before you get in a trade you don't want to be in the trade and then decide well I'm not going to watch that indicator anymore you have to decide that before you ever take a trade and make that part of your plan otherwise then you're just trading haphazardly again without a specific plan so this one we would pass because like I said the trending indicator um, at the bottom of the screen there is below 20 now this is a scalp setup that set up to take long and you can see the green indicator that is circled there now I circled this because I wanted to show you you're gonna have them set up in both directions and you would pass on this because when you look at the longer tick chart the price action on the longer tick chart is below both moving averages so we're not going to take any longs unless our price action is above both moving averages or at least above the the shorter time frame moving average um, and a lot of space in between the two moving averages if you're taking a scalp but in this instance there are no long setting up because our price action on the longer tick chart is below both moving averages um, even though the trending indicator is starting to trend up above 20 um, we still pass because we're not taking any longs like I said unless the price is above both or at least one of the moving averages on the longer tick chart um, this is the same tr uh, scalp trade that I just showed you long and another reason why we would not take this long as a scalp is because the circle at the bottom is showing us that our ticks are all in negative territory anything above that middle line is positive anything below is negative and anything in a negative territory I always pass on longs I wait until that gets in the positive territory so that's just a way all these indicators taken together in the big scheme of things looking at the whole picture is going to help you take quality trades um, and ho hopefully have them go in the direction that you anticipate if you just are using one indicator you know typically that can go either way either for or against without much um, really high odds and I use a bunch of indicators with all, you know the three charts and that is going to give me higher odds of a trade going in my direction as I've said before, I do pass on a lot of trades that would have worked out, but it's not following my plan. There are lots of trades that could work out, but if you don't have a reason why you're getting in, how are you going to repeat that? How are you going to, you know, keep repeating getting in winning trades and being profitable? Um, because something can just as easily go against you if you're not trading with a specific um, plan and mindset. This is. Um, I'm going to show you two scalp trades that set up one at a little probably about uh, 11 minutes after 10 and the other one at about 10 15 10 16 now both these scalps set up on the scalp indicator but if you look at the circle down below you can see that the trending indicator is below 20 so I'm going to pass on those those are trades that I'm not going to take also um, you can see, see my um, indicator with the arrows the stochastic 
both of those are already in oversold territory. Um, I don't mind taking something if it's just crossing into oversold territory, um, if I'm going short, but I would have to have divergence. I wouldn't take something in oversold territory just to take it short. I like to see it come from a Come, coming from the overbought area to go short or at least just crossing over into oversold from a divergence. Now this is a long scalp that's set up um, about 1024, 1025 and this is the, the arrow on the left that you'll see there. Yes, our trending indicator is above 20 but if you look on our longer tick chart, we are not in an uptrend. We are still below both moving averages, so we are not going to take any longs here. Um, again, somebody might um, you know, have their trading plan to where they can do that, but I'm not going to do that. And um, also, it's already in overbought territory. So again, unless I have divergence to go long, I'm not going to take something that's already in overbought territory. Um, I will take something that is just crossing into overbought territory if all, everything else is in alignment but it's just crossing into overbought. Um, the arrow on the middle of, in the middle of the chart is actually a trade that I did take yesterday and I did go over that on yesterday's video so you can look at that um, recording from yesterday but everything is in alignment there. Um, we have our scalp trade that's set up on our scalp indicator. We have um, our stochastic actually just crossing in to oversold territory and so I'm going to take that. Um, actually the, it, the um, trending indicator is trending. I just don't have it at the right time frame there um, but it was still in uh, just above the 20 mark so I took it and unfortunately I didn't circle it on there um, and it's not moved over in the right time frame so I apologize for that. But now you can see this was a really powerful move. Everything in alignment um, had a really nice move down. So those are the types of trades that you're typically going to get when all the indicators and all the charts are confirming an entry. Um, that turned out to be a really nice trade yesterday. Now this one is a scalp that's set up at 1053 long and I'm showing you this because it is set up here on the scalp indicator but we're not in an uptrend when we look at the longer tick chart and also um, you know our, div our um, oversold and overbought isn't where I like it to be for me to take an entry so I would pass because we're not in an uptrend. Now if you look at the other two arrows 1058 and 1103 approximately those are shorts that set up and I did not take these um, even though they're setting up uh, basically both of them are already in oversold territory um, not coming from divergence um, they're just coming from an overbought territory and I typically don't mind taking a short if we don't have divergence if it's in overbought territory but I have to have everything else in alignment now and I'm going to show you why I didn't take these I'm going to go to the longer tick chart and where that circle is is where the price action is occurring on the smaller tick chart that I just showed you. So we're kind of um, in a stalemate there because we're above the smaller uh, moving average and we're below the longer moving average. So not much is going to happen. I'm not going to take a short if I'm above um, the smaller moving average. So you could see that you know not much is going to happen until we you know break a direction in either way. So you can see it just kind of consolidated there, um, you know, with not much direction in, in either way. And so that's why you look at a longer tick chart and then you drill down from there. Um, everything, like I said, has to be in alignment for me to get into a trade. And you're going to find that if you're able to do that, you are going to have higher odds of a successful trade. So. With that said, I just wanted to give you a little more information about the scalp trade setup, and I hope you have a great weekend.